Discovering Fakenham's listed buildings with Fakenham and District Community Archive. Today we'd like to show you some of Fakenham's many listed buildings, or structures to be more precise, because not all of those listed are actual buildings. It may surprise you to know that there are currently 96 listings in the town, 24 of which can be found in the marketplace. It would be impossible for us to cover all of them today, but let's at least take a look at some of the most obvious, and by contrast, some that are perhaps not. A countrywide scheme to protect historic structures was redoubled following the Second World War, when many in our towns and cities had been lost or damaged. Buildings in our lovely old market town began to receive listed status in the early 1950s. However, a further threat developed in the 1960s and 70s, as modernization programs and social change gained momentum. Buildings of significant historical interest and importance were vanishing at quite an alarming rate, so new schemes to protect them were introduced. Sadly, this came too late for some. We'll be looking at those that are forever lost later in the program. So, let's begin. From high above the town's southern approaches, on a bright and busy market day, we can see that the car parks are full, and both the auction and flea markets are in full swing. Rising majestically above the market place in the distance, is the Church of St. Peter and St. Paul, where today, we begin our journey exploring some of the town's listed buildings. As one would expect, the parish church of St. Peter and St. Paul is perhaps the most obvious listing, however, it wasn't until March 1959 that it was granted its Grade 1 status. It's thought that a Saxon church populated this site until around 1070 AD, then, from just after the conquest, an early English stone church was built. The north doorway, leading into St. Peter's Garden was part of this earlier building. Much of the lovely old building we see today was built during the 14th century. Its impressive 115-foot tower was added in the 15th, together with the south porch. Originally, this had an upper chamber or parvise, which was reached by a stone staircase inside the church. In 1602, this was said to have been used as a powder magazine for the region. By contrast, perhaps the least obvious might be the pair of public telephone boxes that stand side by side, at the east corner of Upper Market Place. Designed in 1935 by Sir Giles Gilbert Scott, these quintessentially English red cast iron structures are known technically as Type K6. Long since decommissioned, one of the pair has recently become home to a life-saving defibrillator. The Fakenham boxes were granted Grade 2 status in October 1986. Just round the corner, standing proudly outside the Red Lion Lounge, is the Coronation Memorial Lamp. Listed as Grade 2 in February 1979, this triangular wrought iron structure was first erected in the Market Square in 1902 to commemorate the coronation of King Edward VII. Later it was moved close to the cinema in Oak Street. Then in the 1970s it was moved once more, to a site next to the library. In 2002, around the date of its centenary, it was again restored to a position of prominence in the marketplace where it was unveiled by town mayor and chapel and local historian Jim Baldwin. Standing opposite each other on the north and south sides of the marketplace are two former coaching inns. Facing south is the Red Lion which in part dates back to Tudor times. The current frontage was added following the town centre fire of August 1738, when 26 other dwellings were destroyed. When closed in 1974, the Red Lion was then occupied by the town council, who had by that time outgrown their office space at New Barons Hall in Norwich Road. At the turn of the millennium the building was returned once more to commercial use when it opened as the Gallery Bistro Restaurant and Coffee Shop. Then in 2021, it became the Red Lion Lounge Bar and Restaurant that we see today. 
The Crown Hotel opposite was founded during the Restoration period 1660 to 1688. It is thought to have been built on the site of a hunting lodge used by the Duke of Lancaster. Like many other buildings it was refronted in Georgian times. Both were regular stops for stagecoaches that travelled to and from London and Norwich. With such rich history, both establishments have an impressive list of past licensees, stretching back some 250 years. In 2009, the Crown closed for a time, then, after a couple of false starts, it reopened as a pub in 2017. Both buildings received Grade II status in November 1951. With its Flemish-style gable, Number 1 is arguably the most distinctive building in the marketplace. This three-storey late 19th century building had a traditional pitched gable until the turn of the 20th century. Occupied for many years by ironmonger C.T. Baker, it then became the well-known music shop of Joseph Wainwright and his son Cecil. This northeast corner of the marketplace became known as Wainwright's Corner. In the early 1960s, Number 1 became a delicatessen, and later the fruit and veg shop we see today. It was granted Grade 2 status in February 1979. Standing centrally in the marketplace is the War Memorial, which was unveiled and dedicated on 2 August, 1921. It was designed by Norfolk architect Herbert Palmer and made jointly by local stonemasons Edgar Rush and Frank Harrison, for a sum of £600. Listed as Grade 2 in February 2015, we believe this to be the most recent addition to the town's tally. We have in Fakenham, what is believed to be the best example in Norfolk of a mid-19th century corn exchange. This beautiful listed Victorian building was built in 1855, on a site once occupied by the Old Market Cross at a cost of £4,000. The building was converted into a 700-seat cinema in 1932, and was renamed as the Central Cinema seven years later. After closing in 1976, it became a bingo club, until the 1990s, when it lay unused for a couple of years. An extensive repair programme was then undertaken by architects Nicholas Hills, to restore it visually as closely as possible to the original design and paintwork. After completion in July 2000, it reopened as the Hollywood Cinema. Today it's known once more as the Central Cinema, after becoming independent in 2017. It was listed as Grade 2 in February 1979. Venturing away from the marketplace into Hall Stave, we find the town's first purpose-built fire station. This handsome little building with its twin arched doorways and attractive molded brick and terracotta dressings is admired by many. It was built in 1911 to replace an earlier fire engine house which was situated in Cattle Market Street, right opposite the entrance. When first built, the building had decorative crested ridge tiles and a pyramid-shaped bell cot and weather vane from where a bell would ring out to summon the town's firemen to action. Sadly, these original features no longer exist, they were destroyed following a fire in November 1992, when part of the roof became seriously damaged. Within three decades, fire appliances had evolved to become larger and more advanced, so in 1942, work began on a new facility in Norwich Road. For a time thereafter, the old fire station was used for storage, before eventually becoming home to various commercial businesses associated with the motor trade. Today, it's privately owned as a residential dwelling. The old fire station acquired Grade 2 status in February 1979. Surprisingly, there are a number of unassuming boundary walls in the town that are listed, these include several sections of wall that bordered the once substantial Gardens of the Oaks, a large 18th-century house that once stood in Oak Street. 
Unfortunately, like others of similar historic interest, it escaped protection and was pulled down in 1968 to make way for a new public library, scout hall, and youth and community centers. Its original north boundary has a crinkle crankle or serpentine wall. The remaining aspects include an east wall, which borders church lanes, a 16th century churchyard wall to the south, and this unusual sloping wall that runs down to Ward Oak Street. All were listed grade two in February 2000, Just across the road in Oak Street is the former rectory which was built in the early 18th century, on the site of a medieval moated rectory that stood further to the west. One of the earliest occupants of the new rectory may have been the Reverend John Hackett, BA, MA, and Fellow of Trinity College. He was rector of Fakenham from 1732 until his death in 1745, and is buried at Fakenham. Since being sold off in the 1950s, this early Georgian building has been used as offices, first, by R.C. Edmondson, the town's main Ford dealership, then in the mid-1990s it was used by Fakenham's Adult Education Services, and then the Fakenham branch of Norfolk Citizens Advice Bureau. Currently it's occupied by Sowerby's estate agents. The old rectory was granted Grade 2 status in February 1979. Another listed wall can be found here in Tun Street and Mill Lane. This includes the gate piers of Grove House together with approximately 120 metres of 6 to 7 feet high, flint and brick wall, which is thought to be 18th century. A section toward the south end of Mill Lane has herringbone pattern brickwork. These walls gained grade 2 status in February 1979. Grove House, formerly the residence of local Miller Thomas Goggs, is an Elizabethan mansion house, situated amongst other old buildings in this part of town. Known then as Goggs Hall, it was used during the Great War as a Red Cross Voluntary Aid Detachment Hospital. Later it was lived in by three local doctors in succession, Doctors Norman, Arthur and Priest. Grove House gained Grade 2 status in November 1951. Standing opposite Grove House on the corner of Tun Street and Swan Street is another 1951 Grade II listing. This 17th century house is said to be the oldest surviving building in Fakenham. Its name, Cromwell Cottage, derives from the belief that Cromwell's troops were billeted here during the English Civil War. Particularly striking is its broad chimney stack that was exposed following demolition of the adjacent property whose ground floor walls remain as boundaries of the cottage garden. Leaving Tun Street, we now continue down Mill Lane to the old Fakenham Mill. The old corn mill, and its adjacent offices and storage buildings, had virtually become redundant when they gained Grade 2 listing in February 1979. During the 1980s, the former offices and storage buildings were transformed to become the old mill hotel and restaurant, later becoming the Wensum Lodge. The mill itself followed and was aesthetically converted into 22 desirable residential apartments, earning the local developer award-winning acclaim. Just opposite the mill is the Fakenham Museum of Gas and Local History, the only surviving town gasworks in England and Wales, complete with all equipment that was used to manufacture gas from coal. The works opened in 1846, after a parcel of land in Hempton Road was granted for use as a gasworks by Lord of the Manor, Sir Willoughby Jones. When opened later that year, it provided light for 500 homes with town gas made from coal. After 120 years, gas production in Fakenham ceased and the works fell silent. A successful plan to renovate the old works and open it as a museum came to fruition in May 1987, when it was officially opened by the Duke of Gloucester. As a scheduled ancient monument, the former town gasworks' future is secure. It is run entirely by volunteers and members of the Friends of the Museum.
Close by is the three-arched bridge that spans the River Wensum, built here in place of a ford in 1833. Inmates from the poorhouse on Fakenham Heath were engaged in its initial construction. It was later widened to accommodate ever larger wheel traffic. The story goes that this bridge was built following an incident of great embarrassment suffered by a young Princess Victoria, who while journeying to Fakenham by carriage on her very first visit, became stuck fast in the middle of the stony-bottomed ford. After being freed, the princess is alleged to have said, Such embarrassment may cause me never to return again to this town. Nevertheless, we believe that the incident didn't discourage future royals from visiting from nearby Sandringham. In the past, the bridge has often been referred to as Victoria Bridge, but was never officially named as such, perhaps for fear of offending the future queen with such an insensitive gesture. The bridge was listed Grade 2 in February 1979. Let's now look at some of our town's buildings that were previously public houses that are listed. First, the Cattle Market Tavern in Wells Road which closed in 1957, when its license was transferred to the newly built Henry IV in Greenway Lane. We believe this chap is publican, Ernie Stonark, who kept the tavern during the late 1920s and early 30s. The building was listed Grade 2 in February 1979. Next is the Star Inn, now a private residence, which together with the Crown and Red Lion, are among the town's first listings. Recorded as a pilgrim's house in 1689, the star first became a licensed premise in 1829, when licensee Mr. Carraway registered it as Sheep and Pig Market, Star Inn, Oak Street. The star saw some 25 publicans during its 174 years as a pub. Its license was finally surrendered in September 2013. Nearer the town in Oak Street was the former Royal Oak which after closing in 1975 became commercial premises, first opening as Fakenham Craft Centre and Gallery, who as well as serving coffee, teas, and light lunches, sold a wide range of handmade goods. Thought to be the oldest pub in Fakenham, the Royal Oak too had an extensive history of licensees, dating back to at least 1783. It's currently occupied by estate agents, William H. Brown. The building was listed Grade 2 in October 1976. Unlike those already mentioned, the rampant horse in Queen's Road is of course still currently trading. The ramp as it's sometimes called, has a rich uninterrupted history of publicans dating back to 1835, when Samuel Tuttle was licensee. In his day, Samuel would have known Queen's Road as Rampant Horse Street. The ramp gained listed status in February 1979. Finally, let's look at three examples which didn't survive and that are today, forever lost. This was the 17th century Peckover family house that once graced the corner of the market square. Edmund Peckover was honourably discharged from Cromwell's army, setting up then as a merchant in 1657. The family name remained prominent in the town until Joseph Peckover died in 1836. The Peckovers lived in the manor house for many years, later moving to the market square where they owned the buildings on the south and east sides, as well as much of the other properties. Peckover's bank was in part of what is now Boots. Joseph Peckover's relations carried on under the guise of Sheringham and over men who traded from here until the late 1950s, when they eventually moved to new premises in Holt Road, consequently ending a 300-year association with the square. The vacant building was then quickly demolished and redeveloped to become Woolworths. Currently it's occupied by the warehouse shop. Standing on the corner of Norwich Street and Whitehorse Street was the Wyman and Son Print Office. This unique Art Deco style building was designed by the esteemed Norwich-based architect George Skipper, who was responsible for so many outstanding buildings in Norwich, 
Cromer, and indeed elsewhere in Norfolk. Built toward the end of the 1920s by local builder James Needs, it came into use in 1931, serving for five decades as the printing works' main offices until closure of the works in 1982. Five years later, together with the entire works, it was unceremoniously demolished, leaving a lasting emptiness. Bricks used for its construction were handmade locally, at Little Barney Brickyard. We mentioned previously the demise of the Oaks in Oak Street. This fine 18th century house was home to several local doctors. Most notably, TV personality Michael Palin's grandfather, Edward Watson Palin, who lived and practiced at the Oaks. In today's enlightened times, both the Oaks, the Peckover House and Wyman's print office would almost certainly have been retained, and indeed be worthy of one of Fakenham's coveted heritage trail plaques. Sadly that's all we have time for today. We hope you've enjoyed this brief look at some of Fakenham's listed buildings, and will join us again soon, for another heritage adventure. Meanwhile, let's enjoy a few more old pictures from Fakenham past. This program was written and produced by members of Fakenham and District Community Archive, together with Fakenham Heritage Group, and illustrated by pictures that have kindly been donated by our visiting public. Slideshow Music, Quiet Place, by composer-artist, Johnny Easton, 